Hello, everybody. Welcome Hi. to the House of the Mario, where we House combined the, the coverage of two intellectual media giants that, to be For honest with reason, you... For some reason, when you said House of the Mario, I wanted to say Curse of the Black Pearl, and I have no <laughs> idea why I wanted to say that. Well, why not? Throw the three IPs together. I think there's something to be done there. Pirates, House of the Mario, Curse of dragons, the Black Pearl. Pirates, Mario. Mario, Curse of the Dragon. If it was House of the Mario, Curse of the Black Pill, what would the environment... Do you think it would be animated? Do you think it would be... What would, what would the world be? Gotta be. Pirate ships and stuff? Or would it be like House... Or would it be Mario's? Who has control over it I all, feel like know? in the Mario world, you can just have kind of anything. You can, but yeah, would, it, would, it be, would it be animated in Mario's game. style? Or, you know, like what was... I think Who's so. Dominating? I think Mario would probably oh, yeah. take precedent over everything in, in that terms case, of what style it will be. Is the House of the Dragon and Pirates of the Caribbean references, they're just going to be dragons and pirates. They're not going to be able to get the landscape, you know, or the animation mm. slash uh, formatting for the action, so to speak. Because when you mash up things, you know, like when Family Guy gassed into a Simpsons episode or vice versa, it's like one of them gets to have the landscape, the right? The style yeah. and the locations, yeah. Uh, you gotta choose one, you can't have both. Or well, maybe if you mash them. There was, a, was there a Futurama Simpsons episode? There was, right? Uh, I remember that there was a Futurama and Simpsons comic book crossover. I don't know, do you remember that? Yeah, I had it, but I'm, I'm sure yeah. they, they made a, a, an actual episode eventually as well, but I'd have to I, uh, I don't know about that. I'm not sure. I remember that comic was kind of it, because it was like, the idea was that the Simpsons comics were, uh, Futurama was the real world, and the Simpsons comics were the Made up world. Yeah, man, I liked those Simpsons and Futurama comics. They were they were fun. I liked them too. They were neat. That was my foray into comics. Students, each one of you Mine too. <laughs> that, was, that was how I got interested in comics. Yeah, isn't it like the premise of the episode is they have a time capsule or something? I have like vague memories of this, but the fact that I can find. Yeah, I, I I got fully animated clips here of Bender and Lisa hanging out. I doubt these are the fan okay, made. Right. Yeah, this is such a satisfying crossover, well fitted, unlike the Family Guy one. Ooh, ooh, shots. That's the top comment. I guess. A O. A O. Damn. I mean, I do agree. I I thought that Family Guy one wasn't uh wasn't like great. Um. All right. Anyway, we'll <laughs> let's anyway, check out some messages. Uh, oh, this should be some grade A cringe. Yeah, yeah, Grace especially. She's uh, I'm thinking she's, so. She's one for the history books. Oh my goodness, it's Ben Shabibo and disgraceful Ranny. I don't think that's the reference to Elden Ring. I, I don't think that's Grace. That's people are gonna be upset comparing those two. People like Ranny. Um, hi Rags. Hello. Hello, E Fappers and Rags. Hey, hey there. So hello from me too, you know. I'm an e-fapper. Uh, what did we do to deserve Grace Randolph? The chat hasn't misrepresented any of your points in a while. Give us a break. You earned mm. Grace, like in a good way. She's a reward. She is a beautiful queen. Think of the things you wouldn't have thought of if you hadn't thought of the things that she thought of. <laughs> Very true. So, yeah. you know, take it as a Grace big old is, plus. Uh, she's a maverick. Absolutely. Since the legacy characters were ruined by Disney, would you consider Luthen to be the best Star Wars character? Ooh. So... Uh, well, you picked him as your favorite, right? Under the logic of, like, we actually do consider the sequels oh, canon, then of course it. Luke has been fucked. Yeah. But, like, Vader's fine. As far as I know. And... What about you... in uh, Kenobi? Oh, I think he'll be stuck around with his competence quite yeah, a bit. He's a fucking moron in that show, isn't he? He is. Not he was fine in Rogue One. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was, he was fine in Rogue One. I agree. Yeah, a hallway scene. Okay, it's fucking mm -hmm. <laughs> Kino. Uh, Kino Loy, another one of the best characters. In Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say Kano. So no, not Kano. I don't like this question because it it's leading me down to places I don't want to go. Uh, that's true. If we, a lesser podcast would surely just uh, stop thinking about it. We have to accept Not us. that everything is canon, then yeah. Like, like instead of being like, that was out of character, we just accept it all as in character, then of course I don't yeah. like a lot of these characters as much, like Luke. Like, yeah. certainly fucking Obi-Wan. Imagine 
all of that <laughs> stuff was already out. Like, everyone treated the Kenobi show as part of the prequels, and the prequels were like, yeah, it's all as good as you watch it all together. I, f I feel like you'd be like, what the fuck was the Kenobi show? That was weird. Oh, of course. Yeah, it was just this weird, like, story in the middle of it that was pretty bad. And, like, uh, awkwardly tries to have exactly the same ending as the ending of Revenge of the Sith, but has a bunch of bullshit on top of it now. The, um, mm. it, it reminds me of, like, this, what, what is it, like, the maximum version of, like, Sonic 2 and Knuckles and something and something, and, like, you can keep packing those little packs on top of it in the whole machine, and it ends up looking retarded. I, I forget what the, all of them are, but my point is that, like, you know, we're adding a bunch of shit in the middle of this story right here, and you're like, but if you do that, you're gonna have to reset it all to get it back to where it was. And it's like, oh, we can do that. Yeah, we'll just we'll just nah. do all of the beats that were at the end of Revenge of the Sith. It's like, uh, okay. What was the we point of, of the Sith? We, I mean, we did a New Hope again, you know, back in 2015. Let's just do, uh, you know, the Revenge of the Sith again. But at least it's all cycle. It never <laughs> at least, ends. Like poetry, it rhymes. Uh, Force Awakens was about new people. Some of them, anyway. This was like. <laughs> The, the stories were- it's so funny to me because George clearly, almost cartoonishly, connected Revenge of the Sith to A New Hope, right? There's 19 years between <laughs> them, but there could have been a week between them with how he did it. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. all done. And then it's like, but there was something else that happened there. And it's like, oh, was there? I was there. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> they had Obi-Wan leave him for dead again. <laughs> like... Yeah. Oh, so stupid. Didn't leave him for dead, just- Left him, just walked left away. Left him, yeah, didn't even leave him for dead, you're right. That's true. He was just too sad. He was just sad, he was crying, you know, and... <laughs> you think he'd be experienced at this, but, yeah. Nah. So Jedi Survivor ended with the main guy going into a space anal and hiding from the Empire to build an army that fights the Empire. Remember this all before Return of the Jedi, but Jedi Sith Inquisitor's lightsabers. I, I got nothing, man. I don't know. Uh, well, I guess that is the problem that we've been talking about in terms of how there's always more and more and more Jedi that survived Order 66. You just run <laughs> into this problem of, where were you guys? Where, 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 where were you? <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder what Rebellion Jedi Jar Jar is going to end up doing in Mando Season 4. Who knows? You guys remember him? Jedi Who, sorry? Jedi Jar Jar. Jedi Jar Jar. Mm hmm. That's just what do you mean? I don't. I almost don't want to say anything else because that's enough. <laughs> You'll get it. Like the like. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm at best. I got that's you. That's a one. Oh, right, right. That's a yeah. A good old boy. From... I thought we were because because they have the um. The memes about uh Jar Jar being a Sith. So I thought that's what it was. Oh yeah, they're setting it up. We're gonna have Sith for. Jar Jar yeah. versus Jedi Jar Jar. I think. The two sides, because he got corrupted by palpatism, and it's going to be really interesting, I think. It would be so funny if the one project they gave, like, us to make, for some reason, was the Jar Jar TV show. Like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> we'll really it. Hard it's just called Binks. It would be called yeah, Binks, yeah. Of course it would just be called Binks. Binks. Uh, can you guys slow down? I'm on episode 27. I'll never catch up at this rate. Keep up the good work, though. Love y'all and high ranks. Hello. I believe we in can't you. Slow down. We're out of control. You'll catch up eventually, and you know what? One day you'll be like, "Oh man, I wish they'd made more," because you'll have caught up fully. True. The day no one likes to get to. Uh, if you were uh, to invite any video game character to EFAP, who would it be? Kratos. Oh. <laughs> Hitler. I mean, um, let's see. Uh, video game character? Yeah, sure. He seems like a good choice. He might be. Oh, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Uh, he's not that talkative. But he'd have to be. He's on a podcast. I'd beat him up if he wasn't. Well, um, I as much as I really like Kratos as a character, I think we should get someone who's a bit more outgoing and talkative for the podcast. You, you know? can choose whoever you want. I've made my choice. Because he'll be kind of grunty and I maybe say a couple like, uh, like a rock star protagonist like Arthur or John or... Um... Or like Nico. <laughs> I feel like uh or Trevor. I feel like each I wonder of those. What... Yeah, is, is there a... hmm because we talk about like, like we talk about art, you know, movies and things of that nature. So maybe we should have a character who has a perspective on art and um hmm. 
like a like a Sander Cohen or a Dandelion, something like that, so who really, really wants to discuss their views on art and what art could be and what it should be and how these modern movies of ours sort of stack up against their perception of what I don't art think is you're in their get... world sensible and logical or straightforward analysis from Santa Co and he's going to fucking be nuts. Maybe, but I think that there's there could be some level of like he has an internal system maybe. Um and what it what it should be perhaps. Um but I don't know. Um uh, hmm, it's tough to say. It's tough to say. Or is it just going to turn into just who do you want to hang out with and the EFAP part oh. is almost ancillary. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we just hang yeah. out with someone, you know. I feel like I have a lot of questions for Samus about the adventure she's gone on. Let's but get, she's let's get GLaDOS much, as a though. guest. Yeah, oh, Wheatley. <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting Stephen Merchant as a guest at that point. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, what would be more unconventional sort of choices. I wonder if Mario has anything that he'd be interested in talking about, you know? Well, we could get actually Darth Vader. He's in plenty of games. Oh, yeah, yeah, you could get Darth Vader. He is. Well, collection. Mm hmm. Uh, my friends and I did an EFAP style reaction to Grace Randolph's Mario movie review. You boys are in for one riot wild ride. We were. That was a wild we were. ride. That was, uh, that was quite a. Yeah. Quite a, an adventure, because, no, yeah, adventures are shared, journeys are alone. That's what Rings of Power taught me. Would you consider chess to be a perfect game? Uh, I think damn, so. Man, like, I don't know what you would change about it. Um, like, what it is I... is incredibly broad as a, in terms of the types of games that you can play. I think so, though. It's kind of like like checkers, you know. I like, feel like, like a, the perfect game. Yeah, chess. If if, if somebody said, Fringy, what is the perfect game?" Like chess is a really, 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 really strong contender for that. Agreed. Um, SCP of the day, SCP two thousand, the Deus Ex Machina. I don't know if that means anything to you, Rags. Um, probably not. SCP-2000. Uh, let me see. It's rated very highly. I think every one of the 1,000, every, every time they reach 1,000, they, they go through a lot of work to try and make sure it's a really good one. It's a very big deal to... Yeah, so this, this is probably going to be another long one. Um, it's already got... Oh, wait. Um... Wait a second. I think this is... Oh yeah, I remember this one. Yeah, yeah. This is like a um SCP-2000 is essentially a it is a facility that is uh that exists underneath Yellowstone National Park uh that is um that that is sort of this massive facility under the Yellowstone Park whose purpose is to essentially like repopulate the earth and everything in the case of some uh, some ruinous calamity that happens um and th there's this idea that maybe it's been used before uh but, but we're not certain uh but but i think that's sort of what the the general idea um but i'm but i'm not i'm not sure i think that's just the general concept i think i've read this before a long time ago all right it goes into logs about you know things of that nature how it works and when it should be used and has it been used before and Things you're supposed to do, that sort of thing. Do you consider Luke finding Yoda on a planet by chance a plot hole? Same chance as randomly landing on all of Earth to find rags? It wouldn't be a hole, it'd be a stretch, but a pretty big one. It's a pretty big stretch. Because um, all we know from... All Luke learns in his vision uh, on Hoth from Obi-Wan Kenobi is that he needs to go to the Dagobah system, and there he will find a Jedi Master Yoda. Yeah, and then on, when he lands um, on the planet and finds it, so I don't. Yeah, it's you need a... like a throwaway line where he says, "I don't know, I don't know, R two. It's just this, this, this area particularly. I sense something. Something was, something was. Felt right, like something so was like calling to me. I know. Yeah, yeah. If you had that, maybe you'd be okay. But I don't think they do. So you just uh, you're at crazy levels of headcanon to try and make sense of that at that point. Mm -hmm. 
Um, did you know that the composer for the Mario film fought hard to keep the Invincible Star theme since originally Van Halen's jump was meant to be used? Holy shit. Uh, Wait, say that, say that one more time? Holy fucking shit. Really? Did you know that the composer for the Mario film fought hard to keep the Invincible Star theme since originally Van Halen's jump was meant to be used? Thank God. Holy crap. Really? Apparently. Jeez. Wow, that would have been... Oh my god. Well, it's already annoying that they dropped so many of they them. They already had, yeah, Take On Me, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, just, what was the other ones that they had? Um, Thunderstruck, right? That was one of the ones for when they were making their carts. Yeah. Oh god, the I- Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that, I that, already like, know that, these songs, they're on the radio and that the is, internet all the time. Oh, that, that, that is pain, but it's pain, Ugh. but it's also like, thank god that wasn't what happened, because that- Thank the goodness. Thought, the, the very thought is upsetting me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's uh, a- Jeez. You're not lifting the Mario movie up, you're just bringing these songs down. Uh, is EFAP ever going to finish Batwoman? Yes. Yes, we will. <laughs> you, you see, we've got all sorts of Batwoman uh, all sorts slash of things. Gotham cringe. Yeah. yeah. Gotham Knights has turned out to be a... Uh, there is there is gold in them there hills, let me tell you that. Uh, we got so much stuff on the way. So many things. All of the stuff. You're going to love it. Bringy, one question for you. Wait, he's muted. And he said BRB. Oh, well. <laughs> No, oh, right, just in time. Yeah, <laughs> just went up. Okay. Crazy how bad performance is on Star Wars Survivor when Dead Space did so well in that department. I think it's Unreal Engine Four is the problem. Uh, I can't say, but I yeah, I agree. Dead Space. I have no idea if it. Dead yeah, Space I don't was know. Gorgeous but... and ran perfectly well for me. Yeah, Dead Space ran well and looked gorgeous. So who knows? It's just give me that Dead Space well, Two remake. Do it. Yum, 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 yum. And then give me a Dead Space 3 remake, and then give me Dead Space 4, just in general. Then 5, then 6, yeah. then 7. Then we can stop at 8. Maybe 9. Then we Fuck can round it out to trilogy. a 10. Yeah. Uh, if it isn't too different to play on stream, or if the pros outweighs the cons, then please do it more often. Also, is there any game you'd call perfect? Not sure. Chest. What they were. <laughs> We were referring to in the first bit, but I mean, yeah, kind of chess, Tetris, checkers, that sort of thing. Yeah, games that like have fundamentally uh, nailed the mechanics in terms of restrictions and rules, and that create so many experiences and skill levels and stuff. That that shit feels like it's you've nailed it as a game. Um, of course, in the same way that we talk about stories, the variables go higher the more mechanics and uh, other elements you involve. Like, let's say. Uh, What's, like, the most complicated game for mechanics? The most complicated game for mechanics? I don't know. Maybe an RTS, it's probably maybe? Some... Or a MOBA? It might be something like that. It probably won't be a MOBA. It will be maybe a turn-based strategy game, some sort of Civ Builder, um, colony management, something along those lines. Some well, very That's why I threw an RTS and... as well. It's probably going to be in that area. Yeah. Especially for the stress of maintaining all the stuff as well. So if you had a game like that where everything is can be really long and, and complicated and difficult and you nail everything in that, that's like a different kind of... Well, I was going to say perfect. I doubt any of those games would be considered perfect because there's just so many moving parts that at least one of them yeah. won't so. function perfectly. But yeah. yeah. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. I think I've almost caught up on all of EFAP. I have another 50 hours, I think, but I'm getting there. Thank you, Vringy, Mola, and Rags. No problem. You're welcome. I found a guy who said that you stopped focusing on criticism because you were scared by Jenny Nichols and are now just stealing from your audience. <laughs> Jenny Nichols terrifies um, me. Well, that's kind of weird because uh, the Jenny Nicholson stuff was. How long was ago hilarious. was that? Those were, those were, yeah, those were a long time ago. Those videos were hilarious. What are, what are, yeah, they brought us so right. much joy. I think... What were we doing then? What we're not doing now? No, we criticized like the. I mean, recently we've only been responding to videos, so like I don't even. Especially creators, you know. I, I, yeah, I, uh, we covered Cinema Wins and Sins recently, so I mean, Movie you know, Bob and Grace you know, Randolph, Bob, ben, Shapiro, Grace Randolph ben, Shapiro, ben Shapiro, and that guy on that vlog. Like we've covered all kinds of people, big and small. Um, 
Jenny Nicholson, as much as that was annoying, that whole scenario, it's not like she did anything really. She just kind of highlighted the stream, which is on Twitter yeah, made it like a perpetually annoying thing, but that's, that's fine. Um, question for Fringy, thoughts on Bob's Burgers? I really like Bob's Burgers. It's a good show. That's about it, yeah. The other day, I ate at David's Burgers, and it was good. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, one question for Fringy. What's your favorite color, fruit, rock, car, animal, religion, woman, Star Wars character, and toe? Yeah, go ahead, one, write it I'm, down, and Fringy can go through that list uh, here. I, I'm, I'm just going to pick one, obviously. The woman, the favorite gonna... woman. I said I'm going to pick one, not you. <laughs> Well, I think it's only fair that we get to pick. No, I don't think so. What, so what, Back what me up on this molly. Uh, so the options are color, fruit, rock, car, animal, religion, woman, Star Wars character, and toe. Uh, my favorite, color. my favorite uh, fruit is probably bananas. I really like bananas. What's um, a banana? What? I said bananas. Oh, I thought you said Kanana. I no, know, I thought bananas. that was like a regional thing. No, it's it's a nice boring one, bananas, and probably that even a be a regional apple. thing. <laughs> Australians pronounce banana as Kanana. <laughs> no, I didn't think it was pronounced well, I think it meant differently. Like a I thought it was a fruit. different it was, fruit. Yeah, like that just happened to fruit be like, heard of. Yeah. No, but it's bananas. I like bananas. Well, there you go. They're very appealing. Nice. Any predictions for Arcane Season 2? Um... I One think the main it. prediction is that it's going to be um, that there has to be a really central conflict between um, Vi and Caitlyn over presumably what will be like the death of uh, Caitlyn's mother at the hands of Jinx. I wonder if they have like the balls West... to kill Jinx by the end of this season, the coming one. I I think I I mean to me it seems like that's a real possibility, like that it's it's it, that in terms of the direction the story's heading, that seems likely to me. Because well, she she's but, just done uh, something that will like everyone will hate her forever thoroughly. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I want Victor to be pushed to where he is in the game. I'm hoping to see it. Yeah, gimme gimme. Gimme, gimme. Yeah, that would be cool. And I and really like to well see Blitzcrank get made by Victor. That would be cool as fuck. I like to see uh, a little bit more expansion of the world. We were very focused on um, Piltover and Zorn. It'd be cool to uh, get a little bit more on what's yeah. happening elsewhere in the world. Noxus. Maybe we'll get more for um. Because Jace got saved by, um... Oh, damn, what's his name? But do you remember the flashback as a kid? The thing that inspired him to, like, oh, right. go all in on... Yeah, I wonder if we'll see him. Yeah, gotta be. I think as the show goes on, we're getting more and more magic. That's gonna be... Yeah, that's gonna be theme. really so, cool to see. Yeah, we'll be jumping on that the second it's out. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, straight good. away. Probably watch the whole season in one day. I think that, well, they'll deliver <laughs> it in three pieces probably again, won't they? Oh, well, you know, same deal. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. If it's well, as it's, good it's crazy as the first season is, that's very likely. We watched the first season, I think, a good, good while after it was fully out, right? Like it was we a while like, after it was out, yeah. Yes, yeah, it just works out that way sometimes. Wait a minute, that's the Game of Thrones is all horses guy. Game of Thrones is all horses? That's something Ben Shapiro said? Horses all the way down. All right. Warn us before playing videos so we can mute her. <laughs> <laughs> so we can mute her. Uh, Y'all see Gunn wasn't happy with how Infinity War handled uh, Star-Lord. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't... Yeah, I saw the quotes where it's like, he wouldn't have... I'm not happy with how Gunn handled Star-Lord, so... Uh, yeah, that's the yeah, thing at there. this point. It's, it gets yeah, awkward, because... Uh, yeah. <laughs> what else can you say? It's like, man... Well, uh, EFAB Gaming suggestion, Tetris Effect has a three-player co-op multiplayer. I'd love to see how many bosses you could defeat. The last one is quite hard. Tetris oh, Effect. Fun. I've never heard of that, but yeah, that I'm can be neat. The three of us work together to kill Tetris bosses. That sounds <laughs> strange, but also <laughs> cool. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really heavy Brooklyn accent. And then say, why so bad, Mauler? I don't know if they want one of us to say that or not. Seems to be directed at me. It does, doesn't it? So, does that mean that one, one of you two have to do it to me? And I don't know why, I don't really know what it's referencing. 
So we gotta say what now? Why so bad, Mauler, in your most heaviest Brooklyn accent? Hey, why so bad, Mala? I don't know. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't mean it. Yeah. Okay, then. Bringy, why do you hate that'll 2012 be, so much? Did 2012 for the cab ride. hurt you? Did 2012 offer you goo from the didgeridoo, but there was no didgeridoo? Did 2012 touch you in your lab coat area? You're safe here, Fringy. Hi, Rag. The lab coat area um, is... Hello. But the lab coat area is a, a large swath of the body. Lab coats cover up a lot. Yeah. Um, the reason why I hate 2012 is because beyond having a lot of, like, the standard bad beats in, like, Roland Emmerich disaster films, I've always said it, but I don't understand, like, why Gordon was so mistreated by that story. Um, he was, like, he, he was instrumental in saving everybody. Uh, he came through, like, consistently, and he was a nice guy. And then he gets crushed to death in some gears, and everybody forgets about him and moves on. Like, that was one of those, um... You talked about, Mola, how it was in uh, The Lost World, that guy who saved everybody and then gets eaten by the T-Rex. It, it just felt like unfair of the film to do that. Like it was it was like overly cruel and almost like goes unrecognized that we like somebody like, who was uh, heroic. You know, have some kind of conversation comparing death. stuff like that with stuff like Juno in, in Descent. Like how is that fair? Yeah, then? exactly. It's like, oh, how well. Well, it's it's the element of it, we've talked about it before. The film needs to recognize a tragedy when it creates one. Yeah, that the film yeah. doesn't recognize that what it's done is a tragic and sad thing, and seems to kind it's of forget really about confusing. it. Confusing. It's yeah. just confusing, you know. And like, and somebody might be like, "Well, that doesn't seem consistent." But it's like, no, but really, like, if you're watching Saving Private Ryan when Wade gets killed, and they were playing like really happy-go-lucky music, you would be baffled. You would you would just be. It would be like. What the hell are you trying to tell me here? Like, what do you want me to think is happening here, right? Like, that would be an example, I'd say, of, like, a total clash between what is actually happening and seemingly what the film would want you to think. Obviously, that's not the case in that one, but that's that's kind of what I would be pointing to as, um... Like, a film essentially almost, like, misunderstanding what is happening in its own story, uh, resulting in, like, a clashing tone. So, yeah, for instance... Like, what have Gordon you done, getting... you know? Yeah, and so, like, Gordon getting crushed to death in Gears and everybody moving on and not acknowledging him and his sacrifices in any way at all. It just feels like, it, to me, that's like, the movie doesn't realize what they've done. There's like some, there's some major error in like the movie's read of its own characters and story. Um, it, yeah, it just felt like bullshit. And, and then of course, there's just the fact that the plot is absurd and stupid too. Yep. You think God... So yeah, that's why I hate 2012. You think God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of Grace Randolph? Maybe. <laughs> she is a demon. Yeah. <laughs> he escaped from hell. She rebelled against him in the early days of the cosmos. Bringy, who wins in a fight between movie Mario and movie Sonic? Power ups and chaos emeralds are allowed. Uh, I don't know, man. Because then it's just Bringy is our resident Sonic expert. Well, it'd just be a fight between Invincible Mario and and like Super Sonic. I don't Which know who wins longer. that fight. Uh, I don't know. You can. I don't. I. I have no idea. I don't know. Well, Mario might be able to make use of it. I was gonna say, uh, you must well, have some yeah, idea. We we saw the limit of the Mario star. Uh, I mean, we saw it in the film. Yeah, it was like maybe two minutes. Um, but Super Sonic was like two or three minutes as well. So it feels like they're pretty comparable. I guess the difference is that like Super Sonic is more powerful. It seems to me than Invince. Well, no, it's complicated because Mario is like indestructible, whereas I don't think Super Sonic is indestructible. He's just, like, very strong and can fly and, and go really fast. Well, um, Sonic would just have to, like, outlast uh, and try to avoid getting, I think you know, Which it, would be easy for him, by the way, because yeah. he can fly. Because he, just... he can go so fast and fly away, yeah. He can go really fast, that's true. So, I, I mean, the reality is base Sonic is stronger than base Mario, obviously. So, which is kind of... A, but obviously. Invincible Mario is... Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Sonic's super fast and, and strong, seemingly. He spins... Mario can jump high, I guess. Um, Fringy, what's your opinion on the Austria joke in Dumb and Dumber? If you don't remember, look it up, you'll laugh. I don't remember it. I don't um, I'll mean... look it up later. Sorry. Maybe they mean Australia rather than Austria? I don't know. Maybe. I can't remember. Could be either. I haven't, I haven't seen that film in ages. It is not. But I'll look it up later. Aside from the music, what are some good things you can say about The Dark Knight? The performances are fantastic. The performances are, are really, really good. good. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Like, like Heath Ledger's is unironically and well-deserved to be one of the greatest yeah. performances 
like ever. It's excellent. He uh, the scene becomes where that character. The, the guy is captured. The look at me, look at me, like that. That that shit's crazy. Scary. It's scary. It is nice and scary. I mean, it's iconic. Like he he was excellent in that role. Um, goddamn, it'd, it'd be hard to beat that. You know, <laughs> like in general. I like the sound. Like, not the soundtrack necessarily, but also that, but the sound of just, like, the sound mixing in that whole movie, which is, you know, sometimes Nolan can really fuck that up, as we know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, very, um, I just, I have memories of, like, all the gunshots and, uh, clashing and smashing and, you know, zip wires, everything sounds very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like, that's the sound it would make. Very, very clanky and, and, and uh, makes me feel like it's real. Authentic? Yeah. Yeah. Authentic is um, a good way to describe it, yeah. Something that we didn't, we I totally forgot to mention in our Ant-Man coverage, and if you were to hear it again, you would totally be like, oh my god. But there's, uh, I don't know if you remember, the final fight the Kang has with the good old Ant is, um... The good old Ant. <laughs> he's punching him. And, like, if you go far, back far enough, right, the, the action movies would have the psh sort of, sort of punch sounds. Um, and, and then, like, they updated uh, to be more modern, action-y, very down-to-ground, grounded stuff, where it just sounds like an actual punch sounds in real life. And then they and started, Indiana like... Jones is a good go-to for, like, very yeah, the, big, you know, heavy punch sounds, very punchy, you know, in a way. Um, <laughs> when, he, when Kang punches Ant-Man in that movie in their final fight, it sounds like a fucking freight, like, a, a, a wagon is crashing into a wall. It's, it makes like an echoing sound. It's just like, uh, okay, okay, I get that you want him to seem powerful, but Atbat is a guy. <laughs> like, whatever is making that sound is clearly going to turn his head into mush. Like, a, and, and there's like three of them, but then the final hit he gives him is like a super fucking blasty sound. Like, like I said, if you listen to it, you would you would also be like, wait, what the fuck? Um, you know, and I guess I'm saying the uh, Nolan trilogy, as far as I know, got that right as well. Yeah, there's a lot of things impressive from a production standpoint in those films. Darn correct. Hello, Massives. 11 months as a Hi. member, longer as a viewer. Grace's review is out there, but that's just her brand somehow. Thank you for the countless hours of entertainment. No problem. I think that's... Well, you're welcome. Uh, but I think it's become her brand descriptively. I don't know if it's something that she's trying for. I think she's just really, really shitty, and she doesn't care that much, and she's not smart. So that has become her brand as a result of just how she is. It's not like she's trying to do a bit or play a character or, you know, have an aesthetic. Oh, I, I've said before, I think it's wonderful that she's so, like, uh, solidified in her position that she doesn't have anyone to answer to and she can just say these insane things and be like, yep, that's my opinion. Fuck you if you don't like it. Wouldn't like, want her Whoa. any other way. Because some people be like, she's a shill. It's like, who's she shilling for? Uh, <laughs> like, uh, who, who wants dude, people like this to say these things? Bizarre. Like the, the comment about Cat Mario. <laughs> Who told her to say that? Yeah, who's well, she chilling for I there? I chill for the ancient ones, the dark beings who sleep beneath the earth. That, that could be it. I wouldn't put it past you. Uh, look up Maisie the Barn Hippo, one of the cutest doggos ever with her distinct howling. She's wonderful. Maisie the Barn Hippo? And apparently that's a dog? Maybe it's a hippo-like dog. A All dog right. who is very hippo-esque. You gonna go hunting for that? Yourself or no um, or nay? Daisy the Barn Hippo? Sure. Doggo, yay? Maisie the Barn Hippo on Facebook. Maisie the Barn Hippo. Google images is not didn't hippo. have anything. Adorable is a is a pit bull who does barn stuff. Barn stuff. Um, okay. uh, let's see. I mean it seems like uh, let's see. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I mean, there's a Facebook. You can click on her Facebook. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm Maisie the Barn Hippo, nine thousand followers. Yeah, I guess she's a dog that hangs out. Uh, Are there any images of this cute barn, dog? Barn. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's see. Can I? Can I? Uh. 
I mean, I guess it's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, but let me get a picture. These are all videos. These are all videos, videos, videos. What about this? Is this a? Yeah, here's a here's a picture of Maisie. Maisie, I, I think this is on Easter or something, on account of the extra ears. I see. So, this time yeah. it'll be considered very cute. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, the intro. Maisie is a sassy wagon riding woo queen with her trusty clefty sidekick Andy. Yeah. Wait. Look at her go. Learned a lot today. We have learned a lot today. Some nights I lay awake remembering all the times Rags made a perfectly good pun or joke that no one responded to. For shame. Well, I'm, uh, I, I, uh, while I hate to keep you up at night, it's good to be recognized. And there's something to be said about some of those, you know, puns and subtle, you know, humor injections being subtle and under the radar. You can consider yourself part of a very cool uh, club. Yeah. All kinds of people, yeah, who, who know them. Yeah, so, yeah, don't worry about it. It doesn't keep me up at night. I've accepted my lot in life. Uh, one, I don't, maybe one day my genius will be appreciated fully, but that's okay, you know? I don't know if I, you know, maybe I don't want to be fully understood. Maybe there's some value in being mysterious and knowing that not everyone quite gets you, you know? You get one million dollars, but you have to coom on ecstasy to get. Coom on ecstasy to get a million dollars? So, like, take ecstasy and then well, have a wang? Well, obviously, the ejaculation part I'm not too concerned with. It's the ecstasy bit. Yeah. Um, is ecstasy, like, is it one of those really, really bad ones that's super addictive? I'm um, pretty sure it is, right? Is ecstasy addictive? MDMA? Research has not definitively answered it, but ultimately, yes, ecstasy <laughs> can be addictive. It is a, ultimately, yes, ecstasy can be addictive. While it's well, I guess in the same way that anything can be addictive? Uh, it, it says uh, here on American Addiction Centers, um, da, 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 the notion of whether or not a piece of a, the substance, where do they? Um, control F, Y, all. While tolerance for ecstasy does most likely develop, chronic use of a drug does not result in a significant withdrawal symptom. Without a significant withdrawal symptoms that is formally recognized, it is questionable whether or not an individual can develop physical dependence on ecstasy. So maybe it's like super sugar or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Based on my, my, my 20 seconds worth of reading into the subject. For a million dollars, though, I probably would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would I would coom on ecstasy for a million dollars. Yeah. Assuming there were no legal repercussions, of course, and that was just, you know, that you know, it is what it is. I would, yeah, I would. I'd go for it. The Lorax movie has seventy deals with product placements in it. The worst Dr. Seuss story to do that with. Seventy? <laughs> e, yeah. Oh. Seventy. Wow. Damn. And that's like supposed to be, a, I guess yes, it's not it inherently is contradictory, but like, is oh, that supposed to be like a big environmental anti corporate? Yep, yeah, like, it is. It's like yeah. maybe, like, it, but that seems like a weird one to, you know, to, to have that. Oh, it's in just it, illumination you know? making the Lorax, like, in and of itself is pretty funny to me. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess if they made it and donated a lot to, like, planting trees and things of that nature, and, you know, they, you know, yeah, to spread fun. a message, but, you know, yeah, well, yeah. but, um, I don't know, uh, I'm gonna use the loo real quick. This discussion of the Lorax has caused my body to want to urinate, so. <laughs> John Mulaney's Netflix tree. special was pretty good. Sound familiar to you, John Mulaney? Is that, a, that's a comedian, right? I think so. I've, I'm not familiar. Uh, he played... Did he play Spider-Ham? Oh, maybe, yeah. Uh, I think he... Yeah, I yeah, I recognize him. Um, okay. Well, like a new special? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. It was okay. Huge. Yeah. <coughs> Trey Parker was in Despicable Me 3. Was cool. he? Guess he would have had a voice for somebody in there, but that's neat. I suppose so. In order, the arcs I want. Transformers, Pirates, Despicable Me, slash Minions. 
So I think Transformers and Pirates will happen. As for Despicable Me and Minions, uh... Don't know about that one. <laughs> don't know about that one. Um, other than anything from Multiverse of Madness, what do you think is the worst contrivance in movie history? Uh, maybe, maybe the the ants? The time-dilated oh, ants? Oh, wow, the fact that the time-dilated ants turn into, like, a Type 2 civilization. There's a lot there that make up one big, enormous, crazy stretch. Like, mm -hmm. the fact that they ended up in that place, the fact that they still are loyal to Hank, the fact that they are invested in and wish to stop Oh, Kang. that's a good one, and it's a recent one, yeah. Yeah, and, and just, just the whole thing is astronomical. It's insane. Uh, to be fair to Grace, she is right about the embargo. A movie's embargo releasing just a few hours before it comes out is a bad sign of a studio's confidence. Did we ever disagree with that? I don't think anyone's disagreed with any of that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not going to give her too many props for that one. That's a pretty. Uh, that's a yeah. That's a yeah, pretty standard sort of thing happens with games. I'm fine with like the concept of embargoes is not inherently bad. There, there can be some. There can be some legitimate use to having embargoes, but. The timings of them and their stipulations can determine whether or not they're good or bad. I mean, remember um, Cyberpunk, you couldn't use any yeah. of your own gameplay. So if, if a company came out with a game and they said, you know, you, no, you know, review embargoes until, you know, a week before the game comes out, something like that. So that um, you, you want to you want to prevent journalists rushing through it to be the first to have their review out is ultimately the 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 main thing that they can be used for that is legitimately you know useful um it is useful to have them you know feel as if well i can't release the review before x day anyway so that will give me all the time i need to play through it and to really work with it write my review and be you know fair and balanced to it not just rush through it to have mine be the first one that's out um, so in that context, embargoes can be very good for everyone, both so that the product gets reviewed fairly, and that helps us as consumers who watch those reviews and read them. However, of course, an embargo coming out only hours or just a day before the product comes out, uh, means that not a, there's not a lot of a chance, not a lot of chance for eyes to get on it. So, yeah, it's devil's in the details, as they say. We've been going at this all wrong. We just needed to get Grace a snack gift basket, and boom, she'd be an advocate for your thing. Good to know. And she was really happy about getting that snack gift basket. I don't she think it's that simple, oh, though. Man. Maybe she was cranking that up because she didn't like the movie, you know? She was like, that's what I'll talk about for the fun part. Um, Maybe. Or you can just buy Grace with a snack gift basket. She's a cheap uh, uh, critic, let's call her. Or maybe not, but she was really happy with it. It's very clear that she takes the gift baskets in the screening very seriously. It's certainly something she considers to be very important to the, I guess, her uh, her life and her, you know, what she does. Oh, critters, with all these damn visuals, my eyes are getting crispy. <laughs> Gotta watch that. My eyes didn't get crispy. I think it was a very pleasant visual uh, movie, very visually pleasant. It never, it never got into that garish territory for me. I don't think um, everything seemed uh, fun to to watch. It was vibrant and colorful and interesting. I might not have liked the Mario movie, but this. I guess they're talking about her review. Her review was great. I don't know why you're being so mean. Yeah. Unique insight. Extinct animal of the day, Jacepo, Jacelop. Jacopterus. The it's called the pinching nightmare. The pinching nightmare. Hmm. I it's... can only I shudder to th oh I oh I might know what this is. I actually think I might have seen this in a in a in a book a long time ago. Maybe or potentially. I don't know. Are you uh, getting a picture of it or do I well, need? Well, there's to? a couple. Uh... Couple renditions. I'm trying to find. I guess what would be some kind of happy medium between a lot of them. Um, I don't know. This one's labeled as such, so I guess we'll go with this. Post you. Yeah. Oh damn! That's not the one I'm thinking of. Uh, but that's terrifying. I can see why it's called the pinching nightmare. Seems 
friendly. Seems like he loves pension, and I don't know if I want to be around someone who loves pension. Yeah. He seems like he has very strong opinions on pinching. True. You know? Uh, she's a perfectionist who doesn't work well with editors, so does it all herself. Also a germaphobe who loves theme parks but hasn't left New York City since C. E. I guess I mean COVID. Ah. Uh, I didn't know she was a germaphobe. I also didn't know... That that's she kind of bigoted, but right. doesn't like editors <laughs> to the point of only editing her own work. I guess that explains a lot. I can't yeah. think of an editor who would want to work with her. I mean, if that's the stuff she makes and she wants and she continuously produces, yeah, I could, I could understand why just the very concept of you know artistic, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, what what would the word be you know, artistic cohesion? She would be repulsed by. Possibly. Listen to Defender 2002 track 10. Presumably you'll enjoy it from one of the most rewatchable hours of television. My other car, a Lamborghini. Well, does that mean anything to you guys? Nope. nope. I've never, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Not aware of it. That, my other car, a Lamborghini, sounds strangely familiar. I'm, I'm not sure that that's up for memory, but there's something in there. Um, could be neat to release a poll at the beginning of Movie Breakdowns to see what people think of it, also how that might change after it's discussed. So part of the problem with that is that, um, as far as I'm aware, the audience will have cycled out to be completely different from start to finish. Like, there, there'll be some people who stayed for the whole thing, but a lot of people will have either gone to sleep, gone to work, or otherwise, in, you Whatever, know. Whatever, that is a big <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we could still do it for the curiosity of it, I guess. Uh, movie ball last week, then Bob Shapiro. This week is quite the treat. And Ben Shapiro. Uh, they actually did say Ben Shapiro. I just read it wrong. Missed the classic mm. content. Keep and fapping boys. Movie Bob kisses dogs. Also high rags. Hello. Does he? All right. Trying to kiss dogs. I just I'm worried about any any uh, any source of nutrition or calories that gets that close to his mouth. But Ress Tilda is a Chad for the memberships. Was uh, giving out a whole bunch. Or she. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for doing that. As the brave Lord of Time clinches on his fireballs while facing the light god Athena, he says, It's a me. It's a Mario. It's a Morbin Town. Also, hi. Hello. Um, they got a little dog picture. It's... Oh, hey there. It's, it's a Morbin Time. I did like that scene. It was good. Um, I like that scene too. Thank you for this and the previous episode. Breakdown episodes are fine, but it's the reactions to Tizmy takes that I find the most entertaining. Love ya. That's that's a okay. Fine with me. You no doubt you'll see them more often. Well, they got themselves uh, the Cinema Wars one, which you know a lot of people like to uh, seeing those two just go at a movie like that. It is interesting to see them both trying so Battle hard. Battle Royale, epic one v one. Maybe the secret to Mario's jump is hidden in the mythology. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we can get our answer finally. You explore the ancient scrolls of lore. Yeah. When this first started, the Toxic Brood had no idea we would get so many hours of fun out of this. Thank you. Praise the dawn and high rags. Give Kong. Hello. Give Kong Fap. Someday. There will be a yeah, when there's path. less going on, uh, less we going will on. be able to... Yeah, when there's less going on. Oh no, time to cancel Bowser. That's true. Uh -oh. In this day and age, they had the balls to have a guy who's like, I want to marry her. I was fucked up. Grace wouldn't allow it. Proper women don't get married. They're strong and independent. It took me a year and to realize it's name. Arby, not Army. From Arby and the Chief? Army and the Chief? Really? Arby, Arby of the Dead? What do you mean? I assume they mean... Arby of the Dead. Arby of the Dead? Maybe they're talking about Arby's and they thought it was Armies. Armies? <laughs> when they said, I, yeah, do you want to sign up for the army? I thought, like, get a job at Arby's. Uh, isn't Grace from the same faction of people that wants nude adults to teach children? I have no fucking... What? I don't know. <laughs> what the hell? I have what? No idea what that's about, my dude. 
Cannot believe Bowser is getting the me too Unreal. I guess she expects Bowser to ask Peach to marry him, and when she says no, he'd go back to his shop and just leave. This lady cannot be real. Bowser's just, he's just taking it too far, and I'm glad she's calling him out. Taking it too far. The whole, like, you know, destroying civilizations thing was one thing, but to try and marry a woman against her will, that is... That's beyond fucked up. That's just too much, I think. I can't wait for Disney to detract... Detract Frollo's character when they inevitably make a watered-down live-action remake. That one's happening, right? It's on the way. Uh, wait, uh, is it? Is it story? one of the confirmed ones? Hunchback. I could have sworn I heard something about I casting believe for Hunchback. that. I think I think I've heard that it's like in development, but I feel like we haven't heard anything about it. Like, but yeah, that one's been announced. I'm sure. Another one for the pile. Mm hmm. Mario's being a good friend. The assumption about fighting over Peach says more about Grace than anything. Also, hi, Fringy. Hey. Mario's a good bro and a good friend and just an all-around swell guy. Yeah, he's a good lad. Why does she sound like femme diabeto? Because the opinions are insane. That's probably why. Because the opinions <laughs> are that? insane. Yeah. It affects your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Longbong of Mubslington Abbey. Is there any good chance for Kong Fap? Of Peter Jackson's Long Kong, when there's less going on, could be a movie fab for the ages. Yes, hello, Wags. He's mm. for the good boy. Oh, hello. I think there's a good chance of that happening when there's less going Might on. Might happen, but when there's less going on. You know, yeah, when it's going yeah. on, when it's being recorded, that'll be a time where there are things going on, and it'll still be happening. It's kind of interesting how that works. Uh, think of that arc. That'll be incredible. That will be a long Eve Up Movies, though. Quite the Long Kong. The brain cells I saved by being sober for eight years were just wasted in the first five minutes of this lady's review. It'll happen. Ooh, I was worried that Grace was going to say her one distraction was Donkey Kong's package. I'm not ready for that image montage here. No, just John <laughs> Cena that applies to, not Donkey Kong. Genuine question, does she have a mental handicap? Nothing I'm aware of. I think she is... Normal. She handicaps herself so that it's fair for the rest of us, but uh, I don't she's know how operating she... in a wavelength we can't aspire to. I don't know how she got to where she is, but, uh, wow, you know, unique. It's empowering, really. Yeah, think about it. sure. It even, is... even I got hyped at the platforming slash action sections. The animators carried this hardcore, and it got me right in the heart, and then the OG music swells. Oh, good stuff. I mean, yeah, that's uh, some of the stuff that we were praising it for, too. Some good schnitzel. Mm -hmm. Shout out Fringy knowing what tanukis are. Yeah, tanukis are really interesting little animals. Mm -hmm. They're little animals with massive testicles. Also, far and away, California is the biggest cat girl market. Japan is bigger on maid girls and queen ladies. I did not know that. I just said, why do you know that, Chatter? <laughs> <laughs> you won't upgrade your house till you pay it back, though. He relies on your vanity. I imagine this is about He won't upgrade Nook. your house until you pay it back. That's pretty fucking reasonable, I would yeah, say. It, it, what a crazy before, idea. Before he gives you another massive loan. Like, oh, yeah, you know. A like, zero, what, a zero what an interest loan. To say. He he, he he expects you to pay back a zero interest loan before he gives you a new loan. Like, wow. Yeah. When will this? When will the madness end? That's what I want to <laughs> when, know. When will the reign of t like terror from Tom Nook it come to an end? Maybe when people realize it's not a reign of terror, but like a reign of absolute generosity. Different games? Is she talking about Donkey Kong? Does she not know that Donkey Kong and Mario are from the same world? It would be weird if she didn't know that. I mean, she might not know. Does she from... know? That's the question, yeah. You could have meant a lot of things by it. I don't know. But ultimately, if she didn't know, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me either. I, would, I can it see it would surprise me, way. actually. I thought everybody knew that, but yeah. I know my mum doesn't know in... that. So that's one person. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. Yeah, all right. Well, you got me there. Why yeah. does it look like she puts her eye makeup on upside down? Is she on some kind of spectrum? Maybe. Don't know. Maybe. I Maybe that's know. just the style at the time. To put it on upside down. <laughs> that's just the style Maybe. at the time. You laugh at Grace's <laughs> unique take, but this is exact feedback given by major studio executives when getting approval for games and movies. It's so depressing because their input is effectively an edit 
an edict for us devs. No, that's, that, that is a fair point. If you have people like her who are considered, like, influential and needed to please, and they actually take her feedback and yeah. change the movie based <laughs> on it, it's like, holy fuck, we're in trouble. Wow. Yeah, that's a really, really bad is what that is. You guys should see Grace's follow-up video, lol. I'm afraid we did not. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I need to see that. We need a break that. from Grace, okay? She's like radiation. Yeah. We need a break from Grace before Grace breaks us. That Grace review was something. Glidus, when can we expect a final Hot D Bliss takes? Hey, you, you wait for them golden bit videos to arrive when they do, okay? Uh, he needs time to edit, to write, to record mm -hmm. all those beautiful things. Genuinely curious what they do with Birdo, Schrodinger's trans dino. Do it, Illumination, you won't. Birdo, when, when was the last time Birdo was seen on screen? Uh, Birdo actually was added in the recent Mario Kart 8 DLC. As a wow. player character, it's been a while. Maybe Birdo will show up in the second Mario film? Maybe. I mean, if Yoshi's going to be prominent, which it seems like he will be. You Dumbo should EFAP wisecrack trolley problem is a joke video. It's bad. It also give rags a chance to use the constantly relevant it's low IQ to not engage with hypotheticals line. Play DDLC. Ooh. I'm always happy to trot out that line. <laughs> that's interesting. They have a trolley video on the problem. trolley problem that's apparently very and bad. And they call it a that's joke? I am interested in that. What, what does that I even am... mean? Yeah. Is it, like, I hope it's not as simple as this would never happen. Oh, I would, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, okay, yeah, that's, I love that when dealing with a hypothetical, that would never happen, yeah. Yeah, maybe it wouldn't. Can we, like, engage with the hypothetical then now, now that we've got that sorted? Did you see the video of Shapiro being a vindictive, I guess this is, bitch over Steven Crowder blowing the lid off the Daily Wire's predatory contracts only to pause his diatribe for an ad read? What a little clown boy. Why are you asking us about, <laughs> like, the political, like, an infighting or whatever between, like, Listen, Daily Wire and Crowder? Listen, that sounds like it's your opinion, Chatter, and that's okay, and everyone else can talk about that opinion. as they wish. <laughs> yeah, you I just guys can talk about that. Opinion. You can talk about that. Uh, I agree with the Shapiro. I've always hated how... Ooh. That's a spoiler for, for good old Buffy. And why oh. doesn't that put... They're just making fun of him. They're saying characters change. Oh, and that I they, see. Right, yeah. They hate Because Buffy and Angel are probably some of the best shows for characters that fucking change like hell. So many of them become completely different people by the time you hit the end. Oh, yeah. Massives. Any of you checked into Bo is Afraid, a three-hour film starring Joaquin Phoenix, very fascinating rat to say the least, and a crazy ending. I don't even know this movie. All I know is that it's like one of the most expensive movies. Was it for A24? Like they. Uh, I, I think it's an A24 thing. It sounds they packed like, uh... a lot of budget into it and it did not return, but I don't know why anyone would have expected it to. It's a hyper artsy niche movie. Uh, oh, okay. I've seen uh, it. At YMS and Capital O. Have a $35 million budget. Give their. Yeah. Um, their reviews of it, and it's like, it, yeah, it just seemed like, you know, it's not a film I would not check out. It's just one that I don't know how high it would be on my list of things I need to check out. It's, um, looks very specific in terms of what audience, but hey, you know, I think it's cool that it got made. I like more mm -hmm. experimental choices. With Legend of Zelda Wrath of Bon Squee around the corner, have you made the pilgrimage through the Light of Courage? The Legend of Zelda film should be based on it. Light of Courage? I haven't heard of that. I don't know about that. Don't yeah, know about that either. Springy, yeah. do dragons sweat goo? I don't know what dra dragons don't pass bright, right? Mm. It depends. Uh, it depends on, I suppose, what your dragon lore is. Are they like dinosaurs? Like, are they? They're probably not truly well, there reptiles. Aren't, there aren't many maybe, animals but... that uh, perspire, right? It's one of the big things that humans have over, like, basically any other animal. Yeah, that we, we have a very cool complex like that. cooling system. Yeah, some animals sweat a little here and there, but mm. I don't know. I I can honestly with dragons, I could kind of believe uh, that they do. I could, yeah, why not? I could believe it. I I doubt they sweat goo, but you know, probably no, not yeah, goo. That's 
Maybe their maybe their sweat is more viscous, so it's just kind of thicker. But I'm not, I'm not sure. Coming in late, missed the first half of this EFAP because I was sucked in on a previous EFAP, the pointing one. Can't wait for this third stage tism. I remember mm. the pointing one. Pointing one. I remember Mr. Pointer. Pointing. Yeah, with his jacket. That's true. Howdy all. I don't watch House of Dragons and therefore have nothing to add to this discussion. Instead, I'll ask what are y'all's thoughts on the Psychonauts games? God bless and hi, Fringy. Uh, hey, I hear that they're good. I also hear that they're As good. As do I. I hear that they are quite I ain't good. never played them, though. Me neither. I haven't played them either. Um, hello there. This one's for rags. Cocks, tails, and cocktails. I like two of those. Right. By the way, thank you for your amazing long reviews, Mola. Thank you. Another one is on the way. <laughs> they are good. Now watch Matt Walsh play Five Nights at Freddy's. We did. It was shit. We did. He sucks. Ben Shapiro played Mario Kart with Matt Walsh, Michael Knowles, and Andrew Clavin and Tim Pool, and it was sh well that one was a little bit better. But it was that one still was shit. that one was markedly better, but it yeah. wasn't that good because it was just you know just cringe kind of like conservative boomer cringe. You mm -hmm. know, it just wasn't. But it's definitely it was way better than them alone when they were when they had each other there to you know riff we off. We can see of them and... making memes together. It was uncanny. Yeah, they were they were smiling and memeing. As they look they like do. humans. So neat. They did look like humans. Uh, I love that this is a really great segue into my super chat from the other week. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Alrighty. Should have had Matt Walsh play on a Gmod 1942 dark RP server with your boy Bub Games and troll the wannabe internet Nazis by breaking their cringe rules. Dark okay. RP I just think we should have given him... I actually think Tetris would be just great, because he'd know what it is. He'd probably get Tetris engaged by it and lose and be sad. And then we can put him into, like, maybe one of the newer Pac-Mans, where it gets all crazy and lights up, so he's convinced it's a new game, but really it's it would, just... It'd be, it has to be Pac-Man, not Pac-Woman. That's Yeah, woke fuck Pac-Woman. Yeah, yeah Pac they woke fight it. Pretty woke. Jeez. Terrible. Uh, you could look up Joe Biden playing Magic the Gathering next. <laughs> <laughs> That's not real. Uh, of course I know... it is. You have to believe. I know you guys might not be interested, but the Daily Wire hosts Mario Kart with Tim Pool. Yeah, we did have a look at it. There's a funny observation Shapiro makes later about how he spent his childhood applying himself and ignoring video games, and Tim Pool was a stoner skater kid who played games all the time, and today they make the same amount of money. Uh... I mean, you know, that's just life, I guess. <laughs> like this. Sometimes that's, uh, yeah. I don't, this is definitely not endorsement of any particular, um educational aspiration live the life you want to live that's right don't let you wear your beanies, beanies wear your yarmulkes play yeah. your mario wear them both wear, wear them both. both i mean they're they're probably a hybrid out there oh, almost certainly is there's got to be someone who made a hybrid For... yeah. yeah absolutely so this one's in all caps god damn it night one of five nights at freddy's one is designed to be empty and slow as to not overwhelm the player and let them get used to its atmosphere and style the whole game isn't like that you poopy heads i know that oh shit <laughs> the whole game is like, <laughs> it's still bad huh? maybe that was them maybe that was them <laughs> criticizing that selection of a game which I would agree well, so, with. That's, uh, not the game to give that's the thing we definitely concluded on the stream that that was one of the like probably worst choices. I thought he would end up going further than just the, but then you think about it and it's like, well, even if he does, he's just going to get screamed at by one of the things and then be like, "This is boring. I don't like it," and that's it, which is what it was, unfortunately. And the final super chat, beep boop, closing super chat, ho ho, oh ho, oh ho, indeed. Well, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind donations, your friendly messages and questions. That's it for us for today. Uh, see you in the next EFAP thing. Whatever it may yeah, be. everybody. We will see you later. Thank you for the super chats. Bye. Goodbye. See, see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>